The chief of the naval staff has decided to put in his resignation, which has been accepted by the government of India. I want to go across to Shivarur, who's accessed the letter put out by Admiral Joshi, which states the reasons for him wanting to step aside. Shiv, this is the first time this letter is being put out in the public domain. Give our viewers a full sense of what the Admiral says. Very terse resignation letter put out by Admiral D.K. Joshi. Uh, Rahul, uh, we've got the full text of that letter. He met A.K. Anthony at about noon today. He says the past few incidents have impacted the professional image of the Navy while the government has continued to repose its fullest trust and confidence in the service. I consider my continuation as Chief of the Naval Staff as untenable in the interests of accountability. I therefore accept the fullest moral responsibility for the above mentioned accidents, incidents, and hence I have the honor to resign with immediate effect. Rahul, uh, we've also got the circumstances under which this, uh, you know, this very a pained, anguished sort of letter was submitted to A.K. Antony. It was just after noon today in the Defence Minister's office in South Block where Admiral D.K. Joshi marched up there. Uh, he made a call before that saying he wanted to meet the uh, minister on an urgent basis. When he reached there, apparently, he was deeply anguished. I've just had a word uh, with someone who was there at that what meeting. He was deeply anguished. He was extremely upset. He sat with A.K. Antony uh, across the table and said, Sir, I have to go at this point of time. It is imperative that you accept my resignation. And then he gave him that particular, uh, th that particular letter. Now, to put it in context for you, how things have happened over the last few months, the Ministry of Defense has been deeply concerned, Rahul, over this, this seemingly unending spate of incidents. The Ministry of Defense has been requesting the Navy to keep it abreast of each and every incident that has actually happened. Uh, it has sent a very stern message to the Navy repeatedly to provide you know, information about this. Because remember, Rahul, apart from the you know, very harsh glare on the Navy itself, uh, you know, this glare has also had some kind of collateral damage hit the Ministry of Defense. Questions have been raised about the Ministry of Defense and the bureaucracy as well. So what you've got now is a very emotional, anguished Navy chief who said, who said, the buck stops with me. I'm going to take moral responsibility. Enough is enough. Here's my resignation. Stay with me, Shiv. I've also got Sundi Punitanan who's uh, with the India Today magazine and he's been tracking very closely all that's been going wrong with the Navy. Now, so many accidents in very quick succession. What really is wrong with the Indian Navy at this time? You know, one sub has literally sunk the naval chief, but far more importantly, is this just mere coincidence or is there something far deeper which has gone wrong with the Navy? Actually, Rahul, there's uh, not one cause that you can pinpoint for this. It seems to be a series of, uh, you know, a series of uh, reasons for all these accidents over the last couple of months. Uh, there is, of course, this concern over uh, aging platforms. It, the the Navy is forced to operate submarines which are uh, over 30 years old uh, because submarines, the Scorpion submarines, haven't arrived. Uh, they're late by over five years. You have uh, serious issues of training. Uh, it's been repeatedly raised by uh, uh, naval officers in the past that uh, a lot of these accidents seem to be uh, uh, because of uh, a lack of uh, a poor seamanship of, of the uh, 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 ship's personnel. And, and uh, last but not the least is the inability of the Navy to accept that uh, there is a very serious problem with these accidents. And uh, uh, Admiral Joshi has taken the high moral ground with his resignation. I mean, it's extremely commendable. He's done what no chief has done in the past. But I mean, that he cannot gloss over the fact that uh, he downplayed these accidents as uh, we were asking him in December I, I still remember that he said that uh, you know the accident record of the Navy was the same as uh, any other global Navy which is uh, very far from the truth because if you look at it the Navy has been losing uh, ships and by losing I mean complete write-offs they've been losing ships at the rate of uh, one warship every three years they've lost four major What's the platforms. international average there is no international average there is no there is no navy in the world that i know of which loses uh, uh, warships why is this happening this is happening uh, you know just as i said earlier it's a combination of poor maintenance uh, old ships poor seamanship uh, and, and and the ma the major uh, problem here is the inability to accept that there is a problem i mean had they accepted uh, uh, about two years back that there was a very serious problem they needed to go into it they would have had uh, paid more attention to these uh, accident reports I mean for instance I'm being told now that uh, there were uh, at least two other similar incidents that uh, on, on kilo class submarines of the Navy which were uh, uh, covered up uh, they've had issues with uh, the battery pit uh, uh, you know ex uh, fires and explosions uh, taking place which have been covered up their lessons have not been learned so uh, I mean the, this these are 
are uh, questions that the Navy must answer. I want to go across to Gaurav Savant. He tried to get through uh, to Admiral Joshi. He, in fact, visited his residence. Gaurav, have we heard yet from the Admiral? We've put out now uh, the letter that he sent in his resignation. Have we understood more about what really led to Admiral Joshi stepping aside? So far, the Navy and the MOD were both in denial. And why is it that the government did not try and persuade him to stay on? Why was his resignation accepted? Because if this had been a NETA, uh, the NETA would not have resigned. Admiral Joshi doing the right thing, taking moral responsibility for these uh, ships meeting with accidents and stepping down. But what are we hearing uh, from where you are, Gaurav? Rahul, we are uh, right outside 12 Rajaji Marg, which is Admiral D.K. Joshi's official residence. And there is a constant stream of friends and well-wishers uh, who are going, meeting the, uh, the Chief of Naval Staff and saying, what you've done is the right thing. But all of them, virtually all of them confiding, uh, saying that the buck actually stops with A.K. Anthony, uh, the Defence Minister, Admiral D.K. Joshi has just been made a scapegoat. Uh, but as we well, as we now well know, that there was a, co a complete breakdown of relationship between the Naval Headquarters and the Ministry of Defence after a series uh, of these accidents. And uh, some, I had interviewed Admiral D.K. Joshi in December, just before Navy Day, and he said that the only serious accident that had taken place was Sindhu Rakshak, uh, the submarine blowing up, killing 18 sailors on board. Uh, that inquiry was on. Uh, top naval officers told me some of the other incidents were actually tyre punctures. Uh, when a vehicle is on the road, there would be a tyre puncture. And the Ministry of Defence was blowing it out of proportions because the Ministry of Defence was trying to fix him. Uh, this is what uh, Navy sources uh, told us constantly, but uh, a complete breakdown of relationship between the Naval Headquarters and the Ministry of Defence. Even today, when the Chief of Naval Staff uh, was, was virtually forced into resigning, uh, uh, you know, he was given a constant dressing down uh, after the incident. He was summoned thrice by the Raksha Mantri in the past one month and asked to explain why these accidents were taking place. No, and, the Raksha and Mantri might be asking these questions of the Naval Chief, but Shiv, there are very serious questions about A.K. Antony's own performance as India's Defence Minister. Every single weapon purchase program has been uh, languishing way behind schedule. His attitude towards the Defence Forces has been highly lackadaisical. If D.K. Joshi is under fire, there are equal number of questions that Antony too needs to answer, Shiv. Absolutely. Several questions relating to modernization about how this image of probity and, you know, the need to actually go slow on every deal because of how many middlemen there are out there, you know, being sacrificed at the altar of proper equipment being made available uh, to the armed forces, uh, Rahul. Several things, uh, you know, in terms of safety, in terms of modernization, fighter aircraft for the Indian Air Force have taken 10 long years. Six of those years have been under AK Antony, not a single fighter jet. The Scorpion submarines, uh, like Sandeep was just mentioning how already five years delayed if those submarines were in service at this point of time perhaps we wouldn't see such uh, you know safety issues as far as the submarine fleet is concerned no action on the manpower issues that the Navy has been crying itself horse horse over for many many day uh, many many years together at this point of time let's not get even let's not even get into uh, you know the alacrity shown by the system uh, Rahul in getting VVIP helicopters whereas crucially needed uh, you know multi-role and light helicopters for for the Navy are deals that just continue to hang fire, you know, endlessly without any clarity uh, or end. Uh, and you know very well, Rahul, about artillery. Uh, you know, one of the war-winning assets required by the Indian Army. Not a single artillery piece, uh, field artillery piece, has been purchased since the Beaufort scam. So under Antony's watch, he's got a lot of answering to do as far as why modernization has, you know, ground to such a frightening halt under his leadership. Because remember, modernization is going to be a very big aspect, uh, you know, that might have and hold the answers to why safety has reached if such a decrepit state in the Sandeep, Navy. Sandeep, if this is a precedent, then Antony too needs to go. His performance as Defence Minister has been apathetic. He hasn't been able to push files through at the slightest whiff of the possibility of a scam. He's turned completely paranoid, pushing back every single defence purchase, uh, in some cases for decades. 
and if there's a problem with maintenance of Indian naval ships, it's also the Ministry of Defense led by A.K. Antony, which is responsible and equally culpable. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with you. I, I, I think the, the, the failure of the defense minister has been his inability to articulate a, a larger defense vision and, and to lead from the front. I mean, the, the, the perception that one gets from the uh, armed forces is that uh, uh, leadership has been abdicated to the bureaucracy and it's a bureaucracy that's calling the shots and and Rahul you know the story it's a very very old uh, civil military uh, rift and and under under uh, the defense minister's watch it's unfortunately been uh, exacerbated so who takes over from here because this usually doesn't happen the navy the air force the army have a very clearly defined line of succession now that suddenly in the middle of his term admiral joshi has decided to step down what happens next? Yeah, it's a very interesting point because now uh, if you look at it uh, the the uh, uh, the chief has mentioned that the vice chief should be only the interim chief until in, uh, the government chooses his successor. Now, I mean, this opens up a whole lot of possibilities. I mean, it could probably be a Pandora's box because uh, the government could actually choose anyone in its wisdom. And this is a situation... But it's also a government which is on its way out. Uh, yes, exactly. It, it's got another few weeks in which it can uh, uh, decide his successor. Now, the present vice chief retires at the end of March next year. And uh, the two contenders for the next uh, Navy chief would be the Western Naval Commander, that's Admiral Shekhar Sinha, and it would be the Eastern Naval Commander, that's Admiral Chopra. So it's up to the government now who it chooses. Okay, I'm going to leave it over there. Gaurav Savant, Shivarur, and Sandeep Punitan for joining us in Center Stage tonight. Thank you.